Hi and welcome to another episode of Wonders of Chemistry with Mickey G. In this episode I'll be focusing on the four steps that occur during each chain elongation that is involved in the production of the C16 fatty acid known as palmitic acid. Just before I begin, let us just recap on the findings from some of the previous episodes covering the process of lipogenesis and chain elongation. Chain elongation is a process in which two carbon units at a time are added to a growing fatty acid chain until the C16 fatty acid palmitic acid is produced. It takes in total seven chain elongations in order to achieve this. The input comes from acetyl coenzyme A, which itself is derived from the food that we consume. Insulin is the hormone which activates the commitment step, and more specifically, the expression of the enzyme acetyl CoA carboxylase, which produces melanyl CoA. And finally, the multi enzyme complex known as fatty acid synthase is responsible for chain elongation and the production of endogenous fatty acids which are then combined with glycerol to give tags. From my last episode you may also recall that there exist a number of preparatory steps involved before chain elongation can begin. These preparatory steps resulted in both a 3 carbon melanol group and a 2 carbon acetyl unit being attached to fatty acid synthase by both the ACP and cysteine components of this multi-enzyme complex. It is also important that you recall that chain elongation occurs at the site of the cysteine residue, where two carbon units at a time are transferred from the melanol group extending the chain by two carbon units per chain elongation while the remaining third carbon, coloured in green, is expelled in the form of a carbon dioxide molecule. OK, now that we have refreshed your memory, let's now look at the four steps that are involved for each chain elongation. During the first step, which is known as a condensation reaction, Two carbons from the melanol ACP are combined with the two red carbons from the acetyl group attached to the cysteine residue. This results in the formation of a four carbon ketone and the elimination of a single carbon in the form of carbon dioxide. Now the bond that that carbon was attached to originally within the melanol ACP is known as a thioester bond and the cleavage of this thioester bond provides the energy required to drive each separate chain elongation. Now, during the second step, the ketone is reduced through a hydrogenation reaction, giving a secondary alcohol. This occurs in the presence of the coenzyme NADPH, which in turn is oxidized to give NADP. During the third step, the secondary alcohol undergoes a dehydration reaction, losing water which in turn creates a carbon-to-carbon -carbon double bond to give an alkene. Finally, during the fourth step, we observe a second hydrogenation reaction, which removes the double bond to create a four-carbon short-chain saturated fatty acid attached to the cysteine residue. As with the second step, the fourth step requires the presence of the coenzyme NADPH, which in turn is oxidized to give NADP. This completes the first chain elongation. These steps are then repeated for each preceding chain elongation, increasing the chain length by two carbon units at a time. The important thing to take away from this is that the product now becomes the input for the preceding chain elongation. This is repeated until the C16 fatty acid known as palmitic acid is produced. One very important point that you cannot overlook is the role of melanocoa in the process. Each chain elongation requires a new molecule of melanol CoA to be combined with ACP. This, as you may be aware, is provided by the commitment step. When acetyl CoA derived from the food that you consume is combined with the bicarbonate anion, you will also note that an ATP is invested each time this occurs, 
Or put another way, each separate chain elongation requires a single ATP as an energy input, otherwise the whole process would collapse. In fact, it's the energy derived from the hydrolysis of the ATP that creates that high energy thioester bond that I mentioned earlier. Okay, so in order to help you consolidate the steps that occur during the first chain elongation, here is a quick schematic of what occurs during the second chain elongation. Note how we begin with a 4 carbon fatty acyl group and we end up with a 6 carbon fatty acyl group attached to the cysteine residue on fatty acid synthase. Each of the steps is exactly the same with condensation first, hydrogenation second, dehydration third, and hydrogenation fourth and last. Reduction reactions occur at steps 2 and 4 in the presence of NADPH. You also need to know how NADPH is regenerated in the cytosol to allow lipogenesis to continue. The simple answer is the pentose phosphate pathway. Also, for those of you who are keen, here are the enzymes that are required for each of these four steps. During the seventh chain elongation, the process comes to a conclusion in which the 14 carbon acyl group combines with a melanol group to give the 16 carbon palmitic acid. In summary, the whole chain elongation process from start to finish requires 7 cycles, 7 ATPs, 14 NADHs and 8 acetyl-CoA's to give palmitic acid. Now, some of you may be wondering why we need 14 NADPHs as opposed to just 7. Well, the simple answer is each chain elongation cycle requires an NADPH at steps number 2 and step number four. This gives us a total of two per cycle, multiplied by seven, giving 14 in total. Another question that you may be wondering about is why we need eight acetyl-CoA's as opposed to just the seven. Well, this is just simple maths. How many two carbon units are there in a 16 carbon fatty acid? Twos into 16 gives us eight acetyl-CoA's. Recall how, in order to begin chain elongation, we need to undergo two preparatory steps. The attachment of a 2-carbon acetyl group to the cysteine component of fatty acid synthase. Please refer to the earlier section of my presentation on how this occurs. And two, a second acetyl-CoA, which combines with the bicarbonate ion during the commitment step to give melanol-CoA, which in turn attaches to the ACP component of fatty acid synthase. So in short, in order for the first chain elongation to occur, two acetyl-CoA's are required as opposed to just the one, while the remaining six chain elongations only require one acetyl-CoA. Two plus six gives us eight acetyl-CoA's in total. Now in my next episode, I'll be focusing on the hormones that control lipogenesis and how they exhibit their effects by referring back to some of the key enzymes and steps involved in both lipogenesis and the beta oxidation pathway. So please subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when this is released. Finally, if you found this presentation to be useful, please click like. Thank you for listening.